Hello, and welcome to today's video where I'll be covering my webcomic process in Clip Studio Paint. In today's video, we'll be discussing character references for webcomics and how you can use Clip Studio Paint's features to easily create one. Links to additional tutorials, as well as everything mentioned in today's video, will be down in the description below. When making a webcomic, consistency in your character's designs is a very important factor to keep in mind. To avoid confusing readers, your character's design shouldn't vary too much from page to page, unless the story dictates otherwise. For this reason, many artists choose to make character reference sheets, also known as turnarounds, for each of their main characters, as a way to document the character's appearance and multiple angles for reference later. This can be a lot of work to do if your story has several characters, but thankfully, Clip Studio Paint has a number of features that make creating character references pretty easy. For today's example, I'll be creating a reference sheet for a character of mine. I'll start by labeling my canvas with what I'd like to add to the sheet. Since this is going to be a reference I use going forward when drawing this character, I want to make sure all of its most important features are represented, and anything of significant importance is drawn at a large size with full detail. The first and most important part of a character reference sheet is the character turnaround. By drawing your character at multiple angles, we get a grasp of how their face, hair, and clothes will look the full way around. There are a few ways to achieve this. The Clip Studio Paint's 3D character models are the fastest and simplest in my opinion. Go to the Materials panel and select a character model from the 3D folder. It may not resemble your character's body type now, but you can change the model's proportions by clicking the little wrench on the pop-up menu, then going to 3D Drawing Figure. Here, you can use the sliders to control things like your character's height, weight, head size, limb size, etc. until they look accurate to their design. It's alright if it isn't perfect. This will serve as a base for us to work off of. If you aren't sure how to size the model properly to your character, I highly recommend opening up the Subview panel and importing a picture of them to use as reference. With your model ready, you can move it to where you want it on the canvas. For a character reference, I recommend leaving the model in a neutral standing position, but you can change the pose to something else if you prefer. Then lock the layer and duplicate it, then unlock it. Locking it before duplicating will force the copy model to be created on a new 3D layer instead of the same one, which will allow us to adjust its camera angle individually. Drag this model to a new position on the canvas, then with the object tool selected, click on your model until this sphere shows up. This will allow you to rotate your model along whichever axis you click. For our purposes, we'll click this green axis and rotate it till we're happy with the new position. You can repeat this step for as many angles as you'd like your sheet to have. At the minimum, I recommend having a front view, a back view, and at least one side view, but more may be necessary if your character has an asymmetrical or complicated design. If you'd like to include a shoulder up portrait of them as well, you can simply add in another 3D model and click these gray handles outside the axis sphere to increase its size. Once it's big enough, add a layer mask to your 3D layer by clicking this button on the layers panel and select only the area you want shown. Click the Invert Selected Area button on the pop-up menu, then press Clear, and everything but your selection will be cropped out. You can use the same method for other body parts as well, like hands if your character wears jewelry, or any areas with tattoos. That's all the time I have for this episode. In the next video, I'll continue where we left off and discuss creating sketches from our models, as well as some other useful tips for making your reference sheet. Check the description below for my social media links and more tutorials. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time.